Welcome to a cloudy day in Thailand, but good news is circuit board version 2 has arrived from China. So let me give you a bit of the timeline on this. I uploaded the board on June 16th, which was a Saturday. They gave me a notice that they were closed f due to the Dragon Boat Festival, which is great. I'm all for employee morale. Uh, it the their tra internal tracking system said it entered actual production on June 19th, which was a Tuesday. Final inspection was June 21st, which was a Thursday. So it took two calendar days to completely finish the process. It was shipped June 21st that same day, and then there was some mystery time, and that's where things get interesting because if you can see. I'm trying to find it on here. Ah, see where it says Singapore. It, this was on the last one too. I think what they do is they, for any uh, delivery scheduled in certain places in Southeast Asia, they put them in giant boxes and onto a plane, fly them to Singapore, and then they enter actual postal systems from Singapore, which is a little strange, but I can live with it. Um, it arrived in Thailand on June 28th, so that's a full week after it left China, and it was delivered today, July 2nd. So, let's crack her open and see how she looks. Nice cardboard box. Oh, what the heck is this? I didn't get that last time. Sorry about the framing. What is this thing? Oh. Ah, I get it. It's a pen inside a fiber, kind of a paper fiber pen holder thing. So that's cool. It's a, a gift pen, a little eco-friendly, and it has kind of a funky tip on the end of it, or this little tip holder. Yeah. Yeah, that's cool. Black ink. All right. Funky pen. Oh. And the top of it is stuck to the adhesive, so that's how you're meant to put your pen away. That's cool, very eco-friendly. All right, let's get to the meat of her. I can reuse this nice padded bag. And circuit boards, please. Oh, oh my god. Oh. I see the slot. We have a slot. This was my biggest fear, was the slot was not going to come to fruition. And the not-so-eco-friendly plastic packaging. Five boards. One, two, three, four, five. And, oh, we have all the slots are correct. Can you see? We have the big slot right here, which separates the negative from the positive inputs. And we have the slots for the big tabs of the current sensor. And other than that, the board looks really good. The font is fantastic on the silk screen. Everything looks good. The new USB package. The new push button reset package. Oh yes, this is great. Let me just grab the um, current sensor and stick that in there and make sure it fits. Come on, 
daddy needs a new circuit board. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Oh, yes. It's perfect. Let me bend these tabs out of the way. Focus. So here we are. There's a little bit of wiggle room in the slots, but that's okay. We can certainly bridge those uh, gaps with solder. Just a little bit of nice wiggle room. And that slot there. Oh, I'm so, 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 so happy. Focus, you feck. All right. We're in. So let me get to soldering. And we'll see how she turns out. Okay, taking things gently, one step at a time. I've got the 12 volt power supply in place. I haven't soldered in the connector because it's just a little too close to the CAN bus chip, and I'm gonna put that in later. So if we power up our 12 volts, we see our 12 volt LED, which is lovely. Then I get to put the jumper onto this header right here, which delivers 12 volts to the five volt regulator. And we have our five volt LED, it's now lit up. And if I check our voltage test point, we are 5.02 volts DC. Awesome. Okay, I've got the parts of the USB uh, soldered in. The USB chip itself is insane. I used my hot air blower on it. I have no idea if it's soldered properly. It doesn't move, so that probably means it's soldered in by at least one pin. But we're going to connect up the at least the power supply part. I'm plugging into my little power pack here. And... That is on, but I have to put the little jumper on to say I'm supplying the board with five volts from the power pack. Okay, let's turn this on. And we have the five volt LED is lit up, but not the 12 volt exactly as we would expect. And the CAN bus lights are lit up the receive light is about half, twice as bright as the transmit light, which is the same thing that happened on the board before. But we have no lights on the USB transmit and receive. I don't know if that's a good or a bad thing yet, but let's keep putting in the chips. And construction is complete. It's plugged into the 12 volt supply. Our LEDs are lit up nicely, and according to my temperature sensor, let's get that over here, uh, nothing is hot, everything is pretty much room temperature. That's the CPU, 27, that's the power regulator, 26, that's the USB chip. Now I haven't flashed any software, so it's just sitting there doing nothing, but at least I'm not overheating and none of the magic smoke is getting out. So let me try plugging it into uh, the USB. Okay, we're now switched over to USB power with the jumper coming out of this power pack and my USB power monitor thing, which is awesome, says we're only drawing 18 to 19 milliamps of power. So it's pretty much it's just enough to light up the LEDs, I suspect. So nothing's going on. So I'm going to wrap up this video. And then the next video will be um, flashing the firmware and adding the new features to the middleware for all the extra goodies. As you stare out on my beach, I would ask you to subscribe to my channel and click like on this video so YouTube thinks I'm worthy again and I have so many people on my channel that they'll give me 10 cents a day in ad revenue. So I thank you for that.